So in the last video of hanging with the Hasidics, um, Yoni had mentioned the ritual bath, and I had, was wondering if he had done a video on that. Now, um, one of the viewers, commenters, uh, Michael, he linked me this video on what is a mikvah, and we had seen the ritual bath only in one other video, uh, which I think was the Yakov Shweki video that the people did in in regards to his song and there was a little boy skip or there was a boy skipping he had a knife in his hand and he went to the ritual bath dunked himself dunked the knife and then that was it but uh this one i guess goes into detail and maybe it's from a woman's perspective i'm not sure uh, but this is by jew in the city Okay, so I'm guessing this is kind of like a, a spin on Sex in the City. Boys, it's raining cats and dogs. Dear Joe in the City, I'm not orthodox, but I work at a fertility clinic. Yeah, very much so. Okay. All right, so let's get into it, I guess. And many of our patients are orthodox Jews. I'm always hearing them talk about mikvah, and I'm so curious about what it is, but I'm too embarrassed to ask anyone. So what is a mikvah exactly? You should never be embarrassed. Just ask. I do it all the time, and you guys laugh at me, but or, or you guys point out sometimes that, you know, it's a simple thing, but if you don't ask, you don't know, right? Who goes to it and why? Thanks. Bernadette from Pasadena. Bernadette. A mikvah literally means a gathering of waters. The first time mikvah is mentioned in the Torah is in Genesis. When <laughs> I love this girl's uh, whole whole thing here. Very well done. God gathers the waters to form the seas. But any natural body of water is a mikvah in its most primal sense because it contains living waters, waters of divine source, which our tradition teaches have the power to purify. I love her her accent. Wood is like she is is very New Yorky or New Jersey something like that. Wood is. But natural bodies of water lack privacy. Don't always meet every requirement of Jewish law, and can even be dangerous. That's why most Jewish communities build man-made mikvahs like this one. Welcome to the mikvah, a destination for the married Jewish woman to pamper the soul. Where a spiritual cleanse is only an immersion away. <coughs> okay, I, I, her acting is uh, pretty good, pretty good. But a uh, question about her outfit. This seems a little bit more uh, form-fitting, even though it is like a dress. Um, is this okay, or is there a problem with her outfit at all, or no? It's very beautiful, and she's very beautiful. So I have no no <laughs> registration. Uh, so so I have nothing against it. I'm just curious. Why must married Jewish women engage in a spiritual cleanse? One of the reasons given for this commandment is because in Judaism, life is the most holy thing there is. So she specifically said married Jewish women. So does that mean women who are not married don't go to the mikvah? And every month inside a woman is the potential for new life. If a woman becomes pregnant and acquires new life, her spiritual status elevates. But if that life doesn't come about, the physical manifestation is her cycle. While the spiritual manifestation is a temporary lowered state of holiness, during which time she and her husband refrain from all physical contact with one another. But then when- Oh, wow. Okay. So, during the period, you don't touch each other at all. Interesting. Okay. Woman immerses in a mikvah. Seven days after her cycle is completed, she attains an even higher level of holiness than she had before and reunites with her husband in what most couples describe as a monthly honeymoon. So, okay, so they go through their period, there's no physical contact, then seven days after the period, she will go to the mikvah, 
and then reach that new spiritual level. Wow, that's a long process. That's like at least a, two weeks there, no? Or am I mis misunderstanding that? That sounds like that's a full two weeks right there. Mikvahs all begin with waiting rooms. Sometimes there's a wait, sometimes you go right in. Women read, pray, and schmooze. But no one ever talks about who she saw at the mikvah the night of her immersion. Everything is kept very discreet. I mean, I don't think gossip would be very uh, approved of anything, right? When a woman immerses in a mikvah, she is spiritually reborn and therefore must enter the water the same way she entered the world, with no clothing, jewelry, makeup, nail polish, or dirt under her nails. So before a woman dunks, she prepares herself in a room like this. Hachana, pre a full... So you can't have any makeup. Uh, obviously you're naked, but she even said no dirt under any of your fingernails or anything. Wow. So you got to get like full on clean, clean, clean. The mikvah preparation always begins with a long hot bath, which is followed by a shower and a careful grooming of every part of her body until she can stand before God, letting nothing come between her and the Almighty. When her preparations are complete, and she's dressed in the robe and slippers provided by the mikvah, she calls for the attendant, who examines her hands, feet, and upper back. Oh my goodness, there's even somebody who you have that checks to make sure that you did everything correctly. Or that you're like, okay to go. Wow. I mean, in that music video, we just saw that boy just jump right in in his clothes and everything, but obviously... I guess what the women use it is for something completely different. To make sure everything's clean. It's important to note that the immersion is always done one at a time, and as the woman walks in and out of the water, the attendant stands behind her robe, ensuring that the immersion remains a modest experience. We're almost ready to see where the immersion takes place, but first, we must go behind the scenes. Yeah, like I love her outfit, it's beautiful. As we said, mikvah waters are Okay. Oh, so this is going to explain the waters. Gotcha. Living waters, which come from natural sources. So in most man-made mikvahs, rainwater is collected in a reservoir like this one, known as a bore, and is connected to the pool of water in which we immerse by at least one hole two inches in diameter. By having the waters from these two pools constantly touching, the sanctity of the living waters are conferred upon the immersion waters. Wow, okay. So that's pretty, pretty like, I mean, I guess it's not a crazy engineering aspect, but yeah, like, so you collect the water from the rain and then it gets distributed into the other water that's already there. So as they mix, you're still getting natural water, even though you're not. Gotcha. We have finally reached the immersion mikvah, which must contain at least 198 gallons of water. The minimum amount needed in order to immerse comfortably, according to our sages. The water is heated, purified. Now, how did they, how did they get that number exactly? And regularly changed. The woman descends into the mikvah and immerses herself completely. Three times, recites a blessing, and then a personal prayer. This is her time to be alone with God, surrounded by some manifestation of the Almighty, even as she stands there in her most vulnerable state. And in terms of who goes to the mikvah, well, I do. I do. I do. So, yeah, in terms of the mikvah, like, okay, obviously she's talking about her period, and once the period happens, after the period is gone, because there was no life that was conceived in it during that, that time that she had it, she goes to the mikvah to cleanse herself in a way, and then she's... But if women have their period regularly and they're not in a relationship or trying to have kids at that time, do they just continue going on um, their daily life or do they still have to then also go to the mikvah regardless? I do. 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 The Hebrew language teaches that mikvah is connected to tikvah, which means hope. Why does mikvah represent hope? Because life has a way of getting off track. Relationships with friends, family, spouse, 
Even God all suffer from time to time. Through Mikvah we learn that there's always an opportunity for a fresh start. But there's always a chance for a new beginning. Sincerely yours, Jew in the City. Uh, 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 I like that. I like that sentiment in the end there. Very nice. You're still here? Good. I kind of forgot to thank our sponsor, mikvacalendar.com, a site I personally use to calculate. Oh, wow. They even have their own, like, uh, appointment, uh, appointment app. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for linking that. It's a quick little crash course on the mikvah. Um, this one was, I guess, more directed to women, obviously. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any other little infos or tidbits you want to drop me, especially from the women, um, uh, point of view and stuff like that, please drop it in the, uh, the description or the comment section below. And, um, yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next video. All right, thanks.